Welcome to another Lore You Should Know segment. I am Greg Tito, and I am here with Ari Levich. How's it going? Uh, It's it's going all right. Yeah. We are here to talk more about the Plane of Ravnica, uh, because Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, a Dungeons & Dragons book, is out everywhere now for you to enjoy and uh, peruse and hopefully start playing a D&D campaign set in the world of Ravnica, uh, in which 10 guilds rule uh, most of what's happening on this plane that's an entire city. Yeah, 10 guilds who hate each other and just, yeah, just trying to, you know, just trying to get by. What could go wrong? Yeah, nothing. Uh, so we've covered all of the 10 guilds on previous segments, but today we are going to talk about the monsters uh, yes. that are new to Dungeons and Dragons, but not new, perhaps, to Magic the Gathering players. So I just want to also start by saying I'm not going to get through all the new monsters. So there is a robust bestiary section of the book that I believe I may be off by a little bit. Uh, I did a quick count. Uh, it might have 78 stat blocks, new stat blocks. 78 yeah. new stat blocks. Which includes the uh, all 10 guild masters have their own stat blocks. Um, there are NPCs that are associated with each guild. Um, and then there are straight up just kind of monstery monsters. So. Yeah, which some of them are are, are completely new to Dungeons yeah. and Dragons players. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about some of those. Okay, yeah. So um, it, when you uh, when you take a look at the book, uh, you're going to notice that at the beginning of the Beast Jerry, there's actually a table for each guild that will list out uh, uh, monsters that are both from uh, from this book and also from the monster manual. Mm-hmm. So there are there are monsters that just are le- you know just associ- that are associated with each guild. Um, but this book just uh, new stat blocks feature things that just haven't existed before. So I want to talk about just some of my favorite ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is not comprehensive in every in every way. I'm just going to get through a few of them. Um, one of the things that is new here, uh, when we talked about is it, uh, I guess way back now. Yeah. Um, we talked. We might have talked about uh, a group of monsters that are called weirds. Is it weirds? And um, if we didn't talk about it here, I talked about it somewhere else. But right, so, anyway. So the Is It League, just real quick, yeah. in case you haven't heard that segment, they are a group of... Kind of uh, kind of mad scientists uh, who love their jobs and kind of mash very... Uh, or they just basically do reckless experiments uh, in the name of, let's see what happens. And uh, that's kind of... Kind and of that's some of these monsters. Yeah. Uh, you know, were viable, I guess is yeah. the word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, And weirds were some of my favorite uh, creatures uh, from the card game. Um, And so the is it harness uh, kind of uh, volatile forces, elemental powers. And sometimes they actually use elementals, the the monster. Um, Weirds are experimental versions of these elementals that take two opposing elements and kind of cram them them together. And, excuse me, the original intent was to make elementals more stable, that if you take two opposite forces, you might balance them out. That is not what happened. (laughs) Uh, It became even more volatile in different ways, but they, um, they're different kind of, basically, there are different types of weird. So you might have something that combines, you know, ice and lightning together, uh, which is one of the ones in here. Um, And, you know, it has this kind of ice shell. And if you, if you destroy it or, you know, damage it, lightning will kind of arc out from it. And so all sorts of things could, uh, you know, you might combine like steam and fire to create these weirds. So we have mm. uh, a bunch of weirds, a uh, handful of weirds uh, in the book itself. And that's W-Y-R-D? Uh, W-E-I-R-D. So weird. Oh, actually in, weird. Like an actual weird. weird. Yeah. Like, oh. it's, it's just, I don't know why so I want it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. That spelling is so weird. Yeah. So these these <laughs> are the, uh, is it weirds? Um, is it? Is it? Is it weird? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you made it weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> I guess I'm done. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, they took, you know, two great tastes that, I don't know if they taste great together, they're, but they're still there. But so. they blow up. They're, yeah, they yeah, blow up. blows up. Uh, they're just a ton of fun. Um, and every one of these, uh, every one of these weirds kind of behaves differently in combat. Um, some actually get bigger uh, and, you know, might might kind of lose its structural integrity and hilarity ensues. So um, it just they're very emblematic of just is it philosophy. And uh, so if you're if you're dealing, if you're fighting in an is it laboratory, just be prepared. You might you might encounter one of these things. It might get weird. Yeah, it might get weird. I like that because it also, uh, you know, plays with player expectation, you know, so like, oh, I, you know, played against a few fire elementals in my time right. oh wait this is not just a fire elemental no, it's no. way weirder yeah in <laughs> fact let me see if i could just show some pictures can i can i hold up uh, is yeah, that a thing we could do you can but it's probably not gonna be the best all right never uh, mind. Uh, sorry everyone 
only only because we have a, you know and a lot of this is for the audio as well yeah so. oh sure sure that makes sense yeah yep. sorry to take it away from you twitch watchers uh right now i tried so <laughs> uh anyway um what is the yeah what is some others some other ones uh for simic so simic is the other science-minded guild but instead of dealing with <clears throat> with kind of explosive forces they love biology, mm. and so they have these things uh, that, that are known as a crasis. And a crasis is a is a monster that they create. <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. No worries. Um, the monster that they create by splicing together characteristics from aquatic, reptilian, uh, uh, amphibious kind of creatures. They just kind of cram them together, um, believing that the if, if you take the best attributes, you could actually create life forms that are perfectly adapted to do whatever they're designed to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things we, we tried out this time is, uh, in the book, is we wanted to let people build their own crisis. That, uh, we, you know, you could start with different sizes. So, you know, you have category one, category two, category three, and that those are kind of different sizes of crisis. And then you could start splicing on different characteristics to create your own. Mm. Um, so if you want to be the kind of... Uh, the, the gene splicer, so to speak, uh, you get to do that uh, as a DM. And that would also, what's also really cool about that is it, it makes it so that players don't necessarily know what to expect when they encounter one of these things. It's up to, the DM could paint a really good picture of describing what they see, and then, you know, you're dealing with gi basically a giant kaiju. So, mm. yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And we saw that when we talked about uh, the Simic earlier, that they've started taking, taking this technology uh, of splicing different characteristics and they create uh, adaptations on themselves. So you might have, you know, uh, a Simic, a mage that has, you know, a crab claw or might be able to have like manta ray wings that actually lets them, you know, might let them fly or glide. And so uh, those also exist in the book as NPCs. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, and that's such a D&D, &D, like, th you know, the owlbear yeah, uh, being yeah. the prime example of, you know, two great tastes that, you know, claw off your face together. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of, uh, th th I mean, that's that's their thing. But it's all about biology, using magic uh, to bring these kind of uh, biological characteristics together. That's super cool. Yeah. I dig it. Um, so other ones that are that are new uh, to D and D, you know, uh, via magic, um, are it's a group of insectoid uh, monsters known as the crawl. K R A U L. Oh. Okay. And they are primarily associated with the Golgari Guild, and they have this kind of rigid, uh, rigid structure that's very kind of clear about what your roles are. You're a soldier, or you know, you wield death magic as a death priest. Um, so they have, they are a sapient oh. race uh, of the, of the crawl. Are yeah. oh, yes. okay. And so uh, they are actually, uh, they have been become ascendant in in the guild. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, they've become more powerful in the guild of late. And uh, so, yeah, we have a variety of different. We have uh, basically a guild, uh, a crawl warrior. We have uh, a, a, a crawl a winged warrior. So you have a flying crawl and mm -hmm. you have a crawl death priest. And so you get kind of a gamut of the different the different roles that they might fill. And so when he said that they have specific roles, is that kind of like an ant colony where there's, yeah, like, exactly. okay, there's the workers, there's the soldiers? Yeah, it's, so it's definitely reminiscent of that. And they can fill the role of shock troops for the Golgari if there's an invasion of the surface or if people come down to uh, Golgari territory. Mm -hmm. um, they often dwell in these uh, these fortresses that almost look like uh, stalactites that hang down from from the uh, ceiling of the undercity. So it's really interesting to see that, you know, if you're entering Golgari territory, you should probably look up because these things might descend on you. Uh, and, yeah, there's there's a really, really fun, a fun group to... Uh, uh, to have to deal with if you're if you're fighting the fighting the Golgari. That's I like that, but not even if you're fighting them. They could just be if you're going through the Undercity yeah, for whatever reason. Exactly, you know, they're going to be an always on uh, you know threat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or you might have you know just a fun NPC it might be a, a you know a Golgari that or a crawl that has that is not part of its colony or whatnot anymore. Yeah, are there are there gateless uh, crawl? Uh, yeah, I mean I think I think that's the fun of uh, of Ravnica is you could you could tell any story you want with that. Um, just, you know, in, in world building terms, they are most closely associated with, with Golgari. Got it. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Um, then we got time for a couple more. So, okay. Yeah. So I want to talk about Archons. Archons. So, Archons. So Archons have a very specific flavor in, in magic. Um, 
they are embodiments of of law and and order. So they are most associated with with the Azorius, which would make which would make sense. Um, Archons in magic are are these beings that are always mounted. So oftentimes when you see them on cards, um, they're always you only see them with their mount. So it was kind of a challenge when we were making this stat block of how do we represent this concept that we only see in a static image on on magic cards? How do we how do we bring this to life? And so we we landed on this notion that their mounts um, have they have this special bond with their mount that they could use bonus action to teleport back to their mount, but they are, they are actually li metaphysically linked to these things. And so we had to figure out, well, okay, uh, what, what is their mount? You know, what is this thing that they are on? So, because usually the Archon is kind of the collective noun for the, the rider and mount, but, mm -hmm. um, well, we had to dig, we dug a little bit deeper into this, and the Archon is the rider, and the mount is, it's kind of bonded mount. And, uh, we looked at these uh, we, when we were doing setting up the mount. We we um, uh, in Ravnica there are these horned cats called felidars, and these are kind of magical creatures. And some of them have wings. And the whole thing about a felidar, which also has a stat stat block in here, hmm. is that they they bond with with another being as well. So you have this kind of mutual bond between rider and mount, which is awesome. But felidars who are not bonded to an Archon, bonded to the Rider, they, spe they serve a special function in the Azorius as well. They will serve uh, in prisons and bond with a prisoner. So if oh. there's ever, if that prisoner ever escapes they something know like that, they, they could track them. So wow. yeah, using that kind of technology, <laughs> Felidar technology yeah. uh, to, to Quote do unquote. that. Quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so that, and then, so that's how the archons are bonding with their mount is using like a, a, a form of that. That's right. Or that's right. are they actually bonding with felidars or is yeah, it? it's kind of, they do this kind of this, this cross bond, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Um, now what exactly is an archon though? Like what is that? Is, uh, is it the like the angels you've been yeah, describing? It, yeah, exactly. So they're, they're, they are celestials. They are the ce celestial being that have basically come up as these, or have manifested as supreme arbiters of law. Uh, law itself on, on Ravnica has power. Uh, the Azorius draw on that as, you know, as, as for their law magic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the guild pact itself that binds, you know, keeps all the guilds essentially in balance, that's law magic. So the Archons are kind of manifestations of, of this concept. And how would they be encountered by player characters? Um, if you... Uh, if if massive laws are or massive laws if 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 you break a law that causes you know a, a, you know causes chaos to unfold you may actually actually alert one of these archons that then would come and you'd have to deal with if you are on the opposite side of them uh, yeah, they're, they're tough and they're tough you know you were making the waving motion are they literally patrolling the skies they might yeah they might so some of them may be patrolling around uh, New Prov which is uh, the uh, the guild hall of the Azorius. Mm -hmm. um, they they may be they may be perched somewhere or maybe even inert, and then you activate them and they <laughs> they come and deal with the problem. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, because they don't because of them being celestials, they don't right. eat or drink or do anything in order to exist. They yeah. Don't. So there are some cool story hooks that could even emerge out of out of you know from an archon. What if an archon is mis is misinterpreting things? Maybe something has gone mm. gone haywire with with the Archon, where they believe somebody is violating a law in a, in a way that they are not, um, and now you have to deal with kind of a rogue Archon. Yeah. So that could be fun. What if a Demir agent put fake memories inside the Archon? Well, what, if, what if? Oh, my yeah, gosh. Who knows? There's so many things we can do. Yeah. All right. Uh, what, what's one more kind of weird monster? <laughs> uh, what <laughs> Even is though one we already covered weirds. One more, yeah. So let, let me Did just, you have another one, or is that? Uh, I could. Unless There's you always wanna, more. Yeah, sorry. One second. I'm just going to... How cool is it to have the actual physical book in your hand as you're talking about it now? It's it's surreal. This is the the first book that I did any design work on, so it, it is a special thing. Um, but there's a really cool thing at the beginning here. Just after the table of context, there uh, uh, contents there is an index of stat blocks. So I'm oh, just looking smart. at that right now, and just which one do I want to talk about? Um, let's talk about. Uh, sorry, let's let's find one. Um, I just want to talk about all of these. <laughs> I can't. Um, okay, this is actually this is one that is 
less glamorous, but I think awesome. Okay. Um, there's a stat block for just a soldier here, which I think we've been we've been needing for a while because mm. we have warrior, we have knight, but we don't have like an official kind of like enlisted soldier stat block. And so I'm really excited that we have we have that here. And soldiers might show up anywhere from like a city watch that is not associated with a guild, or the Boros might have soldiers, the Azorius might have. So this is a stat block that fits fills many roles, particularly in an urban setting, having something that is kind of an official kind of uh yeah, an official so we have, you know, city watch and things like that, but having a soldier felt uh felt right to put in here. That does feel right, especially since so many of the Tokens in Magic yeah. are basically, oh, you create a soldier. Now, does the stat block have lifelink in it? Or vigilance. Or vigilance yeah, or yeah. any of the keywords that uh, are associated yeah. with Magic the Gathering? No, you're going to be sorely disappointed. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> Dang it. It, just, it was something that when we were, we were designing the book, we saw that there, there's definitely a hole to fill, even in just the array of D&D monster stat blocks. That this was an opportunity to include something that could be more universal for everyone's games. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think, a lot of the ways that people are using Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Uh, obviously, it's great yeah, setting. Yeah, pilfer and, away. Just take what you need. Yeah. Because yeah, there's so much in there that is not typical D&D uh, that can be used to, uh, you know, throw players for a loop yeah. or, you know, uh, just to keep everybody on their toes. And so I think that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's for whatever reason, like this little soldier is one of my favorite stat blocks we have in the book. So It will be used, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, great. Well, thanks a lot, Ari. My uh, pleasure. What are uh, some ways people can get in touch with you if the they have questions? The only way. There's but one way. There is but one. <laughs> by pigeon. Uh, <laughs> uh, carrier pigeon. Uh, uh, by message spell. Yeah. Uh, but no, on, uh, I am on Twitter, and I'm trying to be better at Twitter, uh, but I am at, uh, at Winnemal, W-I-N-N-E-M-A-L-L. Excellent. Well, I can't wait for more uh, D&D players to jump into Ravnica. Same. And uh, you've done some great work uh, making sure that they can. Awesome. So... I can't Thank wait. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with some more lore next week. Great. Bye, everybody. All righty. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have recorded a whole bunch of those. They will be coming out in time to come. Uh, we are going to take a very short break and then come back with um, Ivan Van Norman and Caleb Cleveland, the writer and illustrator of these fantastic books right here in front of me, uh, uh, the ABCs and 123s of D&D. &D. Uh, so we'll be back. All right. Thanks a lot, Eric.